My name is Jacqueline Edge, and I'm going to talk about the main things that you need to know about lithium ion battery degradation. This talk covers a recent review that we published, which distills the state of the art knowledge about battery degradation, um, highlighting only the most important papers that you need to read. It uniquely focuses on the interdependency between the mechanisms, but also provides a guide to experiments and models. So why do we care about battery degradation? At present, electric vehicle batteries last anything from five to 15 years. It's quite difficult to predict when they will die or become unsafe to use. So for starters, we need better prediction tools. But also if we can understand why batteries degrade, we could work out how to mitigate this and thereby extend their lifetime. This will make the business case of owning an electric vehicle far more attractive by extending the warranties, but it also improves the sustainability of the product um, by extending the the usable life of all the resources that went into making it. Batteries degrade for many reasons, particularly high or low states of charge, high or low temperatures, and fast charging. A healthy or new battery has a highly complex structure, the integrity of which is important for it to perform well. The electrode materials have to be porous to allow lithium ions to move in and out quickly. The electrode particles have to be electrically connected to the current collectors, and the separator must enable ion transmission, but still electrically separate the positive and negative electrodes to prevent a short circuit. This schematic shows how it works when the battery is discharged. The lithium ions move from the negative electrode to the positive electrode, while the electrons flow in the same direction in the external circuit. Degradation mechanisms essentially break down the complex structure and disrupt its function. In this review, we produced updated graphics and explained in text only the main mechanisms occurring under normal operating conditions. We identified five primary mechanisms, which lead to 13 secondary mechanisms, all of which lead to consequences for the cell's behavior and a reduction in power and energy performance. The literature describes degradation in three tiers. There are the mechanisms, which are the underlying physical and chemical changes which bring about degradation. These feed into certain modes, which are essentially groupings of degradation mechanisms, and these lead to observable effects. What makes degradation complex is that there are only two directly observable effects, a reduction in power and or a reduction in capacity. But underneath this is a complex web of mechanisms that interact with each other to produce these overall effects. To capture the interdependencies, we devise this flowchart, which shows how the primary mechanisms lead to secondary mechanisms and feed into the modes to produce the effects. This is essentially a map of degradation space. SEI growth is a primary mechanism occurring in the negative electrode. When the electrolyte is added to the cell during manufacture, the highly reactive liquid electrolyte and the solid electrode interact to form a layer between them called the solid electrolyte interface. This layer grows further with time, but the rate drops as it thickens. If it gets too thick, it can slow down lithium from diffusing into the electrode or block it altogether. Lithium may become trapped within the SEI, leading to loss of lithium inventory and lower capacity. In the positive electrode, structural decomposition is the primary mechanism which leads to a range of secondary mechanisms, including a layer which forms on the surfaces which is similar to the SEI layer and which we call here the positive SEI or PSEI. In this graphic, we show how the SEI and PSEI may be linked. Electrolyte decomposition can lead to acids which attack the cathode material and liberate transition metals. These can move out and deposit on the positive electrode surface, adding to the PSEI layer. In a process called dissolution migration deposition, these transition metals can migrate across the separator and into the negative electrode, where they may interact with the negative SEI layer and alter its structure. This poisoning can lead to further SEI growth or destabilization. Particle fracture is another primary mechanism occurring in either electrode. Electrode particles may crack due to mechanical abuse either during manufacture or through use, but this is mostly caused by the volume changes occurring in the material as lithium moves in and out during each charge discharge cycle. In graphite, the layers may also exfoliate at the edges. 
As the cracks form and extend, they expose new electrode surface to the liquid electrolyte, and so new SEI or PSEI forms on these surfaces. If the cracks split off whole sections of the particle, this is called island formation, where the separated piece becomes electrically isolated, and all material and lithium within it no longer participate in the battery's function of storing and releasing energy. This figure illustrates the process, showing how the primary mechanisms of particle fracture and SEI or PSEI are connected. This process is particularly important for electrodes which contain silicon, as they experience much larger volume changes when lithium moves in and out. The fifth primary mechanism is lithium plating, in which lithium forms metallic deposits on the negative electrode surface. These deposits can grow into long spikes called dendrites, which could pierce the separator and cause an electrical short circuit. The plating reaction can lead to loss of electrolyte. This figure shows the link between lithium plating and SEI growth, where secondary SEI layers may form on top of the lithium metal deposits. Looking at the web of degradation space, we have identified three types of connection between mechanisms. There are positive feedback loops, but also negative feedback loops, both of which imply a causational link. But there are also coincident links in which multiple mechanisms are triggered by the same conditions, but not necessarily connected to each other. Here we see an example of positive feedback. SEI growth leads to electrolyte decomposition. This can form acids which break down the positive electrolyte material to liberate transition metals. These may either deposit on the positive electrode surface, contributing to PSEI growth, or migrate across to the negative electrode, reacting with the SEI to trigger further SEI growth. Both SEI and PSEI growth result in more electrolyte decomposition. Here we pose an example of negative feedback. SEI growth contributes to loss of lithium inventory. This may increase the potential of the negative electrode and actually inhibit lithium plating. And finally, an example of simultaneous triggering. High temperature and high voltage will increase chemical reaction rates and accelerate both SEI and PSEI growth. These both lead to an increase in impedance and subsequent power fade. The same conditions also accelerate exchanges of nickel for lithium in the positive electrode, which contributes to loss of lithium inventory and stoichiometric drift, both of which result in capacity fade. Therefore, it can be quite difficult to separate out which mechanism causes what, especially as they both contribute to the same observable effects. The review covers a range of in situ, ex situ and in operando experimental techniques which can be used to characterize or identify the various mechanisms. But to do this, you first need a sample which has undergone the required degradation. We have formulated a table of experimental conditions that are likely to induce certain mechanisms, but it is not always possible to totally isolate one particular mechanism. There are essentially two styles of model, physics-based and empirical. In physics-based models, the real-world effects of physical and chemical interactions are built into the mathematics of the model, which makes them more accurate and capable of truly predicting future behavior. In empirical models, simpler summarizing functions are fitted to data, but they may not be a true reflection of the underlying physics. Empirical models have the advantage of being faster to run, while physics models are slower but more accurate. There are also hybrids of the two which try to strike a good balance between speed and accuracy. In physics-based models, there are also many different length scales at which you could apply the model. For example, if you want to understand the properties of a material and how it permits lithium ions to diffuse through it, there are a range of atomistic models that you could use, such as molecular dynamics or density functional theory. We review a range of models which simulate the behavior of the whole cell, incorporating one or more degradation models. Here are just a few examples. There are three degradation stages in a cell's life. The initial drop-off of capacity, which is attributed to the initial SEI formation. This is followed by a period of linear degradation, but at some unpredictable point, this accelerates to non-linear degradation, and cells will often rapidly deteriorate and fail. It is only by combining the interactions of all mechanisms that we'll, we will be able to predict this onset, but currently only a few models exist which combine more than two. 
To summarize, we have classified and explained the main mechanisms and constructed a map of degradation space showing the interconnections, which are key to understanding the onset of rapid aging. We provide a guide to experimentally triggering the different mechanisms and discuss the role of models. More work is needed, however, to understand degradation in the positive electrode and to combine models.